What's up, everybody? Listen, I was walking Sadie one more time right before I came back in the house. And I began to think about something. Don't you know many of our dreams, if we pay attention, is related to Bible? Like, I, I, <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. I was like, many of our dreams are Bible related. That's why it's so important for us to know our word. That's why it's so important for us to have a relationship with Christ. Because if we read our word, we can understand that dream better. I, that's an epiphany, right? That's all I want to share with you guys. All right. Peace out. What's up, everybody? This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to be glad and rejoice in it. Halle, halle. Y'all, hold on. Y'all trying to fix this. Sorry. Hold on. I am about to go and get my hair done in a minute. How you guys doing on today? Y'all see my mic? I know, right? But I'm actually about to go get my hair done. My appointment's at 1030. So after I get my hair done, I'm going to go to the BMV. I got to get something done there. Then I'm going to stop at Walmart, get an oil change, and to see how much they fix this sensor on my car. And then, uh, I don't know. I'll probably go to the park because I haven't been to the park in a minute. It's been raining here. So, yeah, y'all, hold on. All right, like I said, I'm about to go and get my hair done. Lord, be with me so I go to and from my destination. Safe and sound. And with this, I pray, man. Y'all always pray before I get behind this wheel because you just never know. You never know. Always pray behind you before you get behind the wheel. <sighs> All right, y'all, we about to head out to my appointment. Then I'm going to talk to y'all. Y'all still got the sniffles just a little bit, not that much, though. All right, guys, so, yeah, y'all, listen, I want to share something, some uh, fun fact with you guys on today. So I was walking Sadie earlier this morning. Y'all, I'm so used to getting up so early now that it's a habit now. And forget I didn't have to go to work this morning because they let us out for two days for the election or whatnot. And so, yeah, I'm off. And uh, I'm waiting on her to get across the street. But, yeah, y'all, so I was walking Sadie this morning. We was at the park. Not the park that I always go to, but the park here at my, my apartment. And I was telling you guys, well, I was telling my TikTok family about a dream that I had this morning. So I'm going to share it with you guys briefly. Um, I had a dream that, um, well, I'm going to tell you about the dream I had this morning. Then I'll tell you about the one I had yesterday. So this morning, I woke up from a dream where I was, um, there was demonic spirits that was walking up to me. And I began to recognize that they were demons if you will. And I was about to uh, prophesy to somebody and they had already knew what I was going to say or whatnot. But, you know, they had their salon like, yeah, I know you was going to say that or blah, 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 ho, 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 right? And just within that little bit of clip of their dream, I learned something. And that is, don't you know that even witches and warlocks can be accurate in the in their message, right? But good Lord, y'all, Jesus, it's ten nineteen. But um, it takes an anointing for that to. It takes a special anointing for the Holy Spirit to overshadow anything of the devil, right? This is what the Lord brought to my attention, and this is in Bible. It's in Exodus 7. It's in Exodus 7. And it talks about when Jesus uh, allowed uh, or permitted Moses to do miracles, you know, to show Pharaoh that God was real or whatnot, right? And so God told Moses to turn his rod into a snake, and it did. And there were some more miracles. I'm going to read that chapter once I get back. Um, but Pharaoh was like, so what? I can do it too. Because he he's a pagan. 
Oh, oh, he's a witch. Let's call it like it is. Oh, well, in this case, warlock. That's a male witch, warlock. And so he was like, okay, I can do the same trick to watch or what not. And so it was like, one, he did, you know, another uh, miracle. Pharaoh did, did the same exact thing. So that was one particular miracle that he could not do. That was because the power of God hit Moses. You see what I'm saying? What am I saying? It is time for you to start operating in your gifts. It is time for you to start discerning. It is time for you to operate under the anointing that God has placed upon you. I'm telling you, not even a witch, a warlock, or a demon will be able to stop or block and do anything that God has called you to do. That's for sure. You got to work under the anointing of God. And so... I thought about that dream. And don't you know, too, most of our dreams can be related to the Bible. If you know your word, and if you have a relationship with Christ, God will tell you where to go in the Bible that resemble the dream that you had. Case in point for me was Exodus 7 for this morning. Um, and there was another scripture from yesterday. So yesterday I had a dream that I was on a city bus. And I was like in this foreign place, but it was poverty stricken. Every everywhere that I looked, everybody was living in poverty. It reminded me of a foreign country almost. You know what I'm saying? How people was living in huts and different things like that. That's what I saw. It was almost like I was in a third third world country. And it was poverty stricken. And so I stood up on the bus. Bus also represent ministry, teaching ministry. Bus can also, and the citywide bus, because I was on a, uh, like a local bus. And the citywide bus means citywide ministry. And of course, as you guys know, I am in a ministry. And so I began to stand up on the bus and I began to tell the people, wait a minute, this is a place of poverty. Then I began to read scripture. I began to quote, uh, I know it's one for a fact. I don't know where, but I know it's in Proverbs where it said that God makes us rich, um, but he had no sorrow. And this is me paraphrasing that scripture. I'm going to put that scripture right there. And there was another one that I uh, said God uh, gives us wealth. So that's in Deuteronomy. And so I began to read those scriptures. Some, some of the people was listening to me as I was giving that word and some wasn't. What am I saying? Listen, most of our dreams can be Bible related. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to study those two scriptures. And I'm actually going to ask the Holy Spirit to show me which one to talk about for each of my Bible study. Because that could be two, two Fridays of Bible study right there in Exodus 7 and in Deuteronomy, okay? So, yeah, pay attention to your dreams. Really pay attention to it. Um... Hold on, y'all. Make sure this is on me right. Yeah. Pay attention to your dreams, though. And let me say this, too. Single ladies, if you are dreaming you're having sex with somebody, whether somebody you know, somebody you don't know, or whoever, if you are dreaming you are having sex and you are not married, you have to reject that dream and pray against that dream because Satan is trying to form a covenant with you in your sleep. And a lot of people don't believe that or don't know that. But yeah, Satan can also try to create a covenant in your sleep. He can attack you in your sleep if you didn't know that. So you definitely have to be mindful of that. Pray against it and reject that dream as soon as you arise. And this is what I do when I have dreams like that. I say, Lord, first of all, I give God gratitude in the morning. First thing first when I wake up in the morning. Then I ask, how can I serve you today? And then I go on with, um, I reject every demonic attachment, any uh, any attachment of the enemy, um, any influence of the enemy, uh, any sacrifice, any you know anything of the enemy. I reject it now in the name of Jesus. I reject a dream in the name of Jesus. You know, and you can just say whatever it is. You come against it. You plead the blood. Have a way you do it. You just make sure you reject that dream when you wake up. Because you don't want no part of Satan. You don't want no covenant 
with Satan. Because like I said before, and I'm going to say it to you again, you can't form a covenant in your sleep. So be mindful of that. Um, but to Rilla, yeah, yeah. But I'm just excited that I go get to go. I get to go. Can't talk. I get to go and get my hair done. I'm so excited about that. I'm so ready. Yeah, I had this in my hair now for almost two months. In my head for two months. So I am definitely ready for something new. Really. Oh, this is something else too that I was telling um my TikTok people, and I'm gonna tell you guys too. If you need God to reconfirm something like a relationship to you, or if this person is indeed your future husband or not, it's okay to ask the Lord to reconfirm it. There's nothing wrong with asking that. You want to make sure that the person that you are with is truly indeed somebody that you uh, are to be with. There is nothing wrong with that. I heard on TikTok somebody say that if you got to ask God to confirm this is your husband or not, that is nine times out of ten, that is not true. No, nine times out of ten, he is not your husband. I disagree 1,000%. Men and women... Men and women marry these men because they think that God told them that they was their husband. And then they don't get reconfirmed and then they marry the wrong person. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, now, if you need to re if you need reconfirmation to make sure that you heard God correctly, because many times we can listen to our own hearts. We can listen to our own thoughts. And, you know what I'm saying? They can mess us up in the long run. And so what I would suggest, if you feel in your heart you need God to reconfirm that who you are with is indeed your your significant other to be, definitely ask God to reconfirm it and he will do it. Let's think about this thing in the physical, right? How many times do we ask our parents to confirm something, right? Especially if it's something we really want, what do we do? We either remind them so many times or we ask them, you know, when it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Okay, what makes you think that our spiritual father is not like that? You see what I'm saying? He's our spiritual parent. So, of course, you want to make sure that everything that you're hearing is coming from the mouth of God and not from our own ears. No, excuse me, and not from our own heart. Because so many times we tend to listen to our own heart. The Bible says, lean not to our own understanding. Acknowledge God and he will direct our path, right? And so we got to acknowledge God. So let's say if you did ask God to confirm, and he did indeed confirm that this man is truly indeed your, your spouse to be, okay? And you just want to make sure you heard right. Ask the Lord. Lord, did I hear you right? Because how many times, how many of you know that sometimes we can hear God wrong? I, I've been there. My hands slipped it. So, you know, you just definitely want to make sure. So there's nothing wrong with re asking God to reconfirm if this person is for you or not. Because, um, baby, listen, I did that this morning. I did. I, don't get me wrong. I love, I love my future significant other. I really do. Don't get me wrong. I got to put some gas in my car, too. <laughs> However, I just need to make sure because I need some reconfirmation, okay? Because I want to make sure. Are you going to go? Because when you were talking about marrying somebody, you're talking about marrying a, li a lifelong partner. You see what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you're not listening to your own heart, but that you're listening to the voice of God concerning the things of your life. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, I got the sniffles just a little bit, just a little. Yeah, I had took two of my iron supplements. So as you guys know, I had started back taking two uh, iron supplements now instead of me taking one. I was only taking one because you know I was I'm on my gyro. And so I didn't want to be constipated like that. You see what I'm saying? But I was starting to get some, you know, some slight symptoms of low iron. So I was like, yeah, no, nah, let me go on and take, get back to taking two. Because I noticed I was getting a little bit fatigued a little bit more. Um, there was at one point where uh, the lower part of my back, 
well, you know, was starting to hurt, and I haven't been hurting back. I haven't hurt in my back in Lord knows in months or whatnot, and my energy level wasn't where it was too. So I noticed when I was taking two iron tablets every day, my energy was soaring like an eagle. No pain in my body, no aches, no nothing. Like my energy was skyrocket. So I'm back on two now. So yeah. Buttera, 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 y'all. I'm going to get back with you guys later. Like I said, right now, I'm just headed to the salon to get my hair done. Y'all know I'm going to get some more crochets, as I usually do. No shopping right there, right? So, yeah. I'll talk to you guys later, right? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is 8.54 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Ohio. Me and Sadie is outside, so you may hear her barking just a little bit. Ain't no telling who and where she's barking at, but you may hear her. Just want to throw that out there. Um, But yeah, to God be the glory for all that he has done. Listen, God gave me a scripture this morning, Exodus 7, and it talks it talks about when God permitted Moses to do some miraculous miracles, right? Only things that God could allow or what have you, right? And it's funny that he allowed me that scripture because I had a demonic dream um, this mo this morning. And so as I awoke from that dream this morning, that's when God gave me that scripture. Well, let me tell you a little bit about my dream, just a little bit, <laughs> about the dream that I had. Um, I had a dream that I was, I ain't going to say surrounded, but I would say I had dreams that there was demonic spirits that was trying to walk towards me, and I noticed it, right? And I began to, to plead the blood of Jesus and different things like that, as you should do in reality, all right? And so I began to plead the blood of Jesus and so forth. And <laughs> that was the witch. Um, and she came in the form of somebody that I actually went to high school with or what have you. And it was so funny because she was saying to me that um, you're about to tell me that I'm with a witch or with a warlock and so forth and so forth. right? And I indeed was going to tell her that. All right. That portion, that that little bit of portion right there taught me something. It taught me that witches and warlocks can be very accurate. But it takes a very special anointing from God to over exceed that, right? And so within that very small clip I gave you of a dream that I had, I'm going to go a little bit farther with the dream, all right? And so... And she was like, you're about to tell me that I'm with a warlock and what have you, right? And I was about to say yes. However, I felt the Holy Spirit come on me. And I felt the anointing of God take over me. And I told this person, I said, well, so-and-so is at the hospital. And he's going to die right now. And so as soon as I said that, homegirl, she, she jumped on that phone call so quick to verify if I was telling the truth. And so she... It indeed was facts where God was telling me or what have you. Then I went even farther and I said, your mother has been praying for you about blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that, right? And I can tell that the demonic spirit that was in her was coming out or what have you because the, the activation of God was showing up like crazy, right? What am I telling you guys? Listen. You have to have a special anointing when it comes to operating in the prophetic. You got to have a special anointing dealing with anything concerning God. That's why it is so important for you guys to start operating more so in your gifting that the Holy Spirit has placed on the inside of you. I told you you're going to hear that. 
you got to start operating in the anointing that God has set up on you. All right. When I began to read just that scripture in Exodus 7, where it talks about how Moses turned the rod into a, to the snake and how Pharaoh did the same thing. I can hear it in my head like, OK, I can do that same thing to watch. OK, I can do that to watch. You see what I'm saying? But when the but when the anointing of the Holy Ghost hits you, there's going to be some things that not even a demonic spirit can do. I feel God on that. Listen, just because they say they can do something, that's cool, cool beans. But when you are truly operating under the anointing, believe me, you will stand out much differently than they will. And I just want to share that nugget with you. Go and read Exodus 7, okay? Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the dream that I had yesterday. I had a dream yesterday that I was on a bus. And I was in this foreign place. But in this place, it was poverty stricken. And it reminded me, like, of different huts and different places, you know, different countries if you will right and how what the, what it looked like to me it looked like I was just in a foreign country but it was poverty stricken and on that bus I stood up and I looked around you know everything and I said wait a minute this is a place of poverty and I began to stand up and I began to quote um the scripture oh gosh it's in proverbs I believe where it says that God gives us wealth or God gives us riches without adding sorrow. That's in Proverbs, I believe. And so, and I began to meditate on that portion of the dream. And as I was quoting that scripture on the bus, which means bus represents ministry, bus also represents teaching ministry. Um, but I was on a city bus, which means it was a citywide thing, right? A citywide bus, citywide ministry. I'm in ministry in my city. <laughs> All right. And so long story short, anyway, I just got thrown off right now. <laughs> it feels so good out here. Um and the Holy Spirit gave me this scripture. And so yesterday at church, at the end of service, my first lady uh, was talking about wealth. And I found that so funny because I was like, God, I just wrote this in my journal just a moment ago. Just a moment ago, I just wrote this in my journal. And so God was giving me revelation even at church. God was even giving me revelation as I arose this morning from that dream. Listen, I want to reiterate something. And I said this um, the other day. If you are having dreams of you having sex and you are single, regardless of who is with, reject that dream. Plead the blood of Jesus over yourself and pray against it. Why? It's because the enemy is trying to form a covenant through your sleep. You do understand that you can give covenant to the enemy um, if you don't, um, if you're not careful, right? Yes, the enemy will try to operate in your sleep. So please be aware of that, women of God, be aware of that. Um, but yeah, I want to encourage you, operate in the gifts that God has placed on the inside of you. Stop operating more in your discernment, okay? Stop operating more in your discernment. Discerning a spirit is a must. It, it's more than just a fancy word that can say, oh, I know what this is. Oh, I know what that is. No, it's more than that, baby. Discerning a spirit can save your life. That's why God allow us to be able to discern spirits. Everybody can't do that now. Let me be honest. Everybody can't discern spirits. But you want to ask God for clarity. Ask God for guidance and things like that. You see what I'm saying? Um, discerning of the spirits is a gift. So everybody can't do it. But when you are operating under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I promise you God will enhance that gift even more. And so I just want to encourage you with that nugget, all right? Peace out, y'all. I love you so much. Be blessed. What's up, everybody? Y'all see, I got my mic on, right? I love this little thing. <laughs>
to God be the glory for everything that he has done. Halle, halle. Listen, I just want to encourage you guys, y'all. First of all, I'm still outside. It feels so good out here. But I just feel the need to uh, motivate my single ladies, my single sisters. And I just want to encourage you. If you need God to reconfirm something, ask God to do it. There's nothing wrong with asking God to reconfirm something to make sure that you heard him correctly. Because we all at one point in time heard God incorrectly. I raised my hand, right? And so if you're not 1,000% sure that this man God told you is your husband, is your husband, go to God and ask him, like, Lord, this is exactly what I prayed, okay? You can use me as an example. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't care. So you can use it as an example if you want to. But this was my prayer, all right? Father, if this person who I am currently with is not my husband, please show me. Prepare my heart. Lord, I just want to make sure that I'm not hearing my own heart and not listening to your voice. We know that the Bible says lean not to our own understanding, right? So we are not to lean to our own understanding, but we are to listen to the voice of God. And so I began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, Clarify for me once more if the person who I am with is really indeed my husband and not somebody who I just want to be my husband. Because women, we can do that too. You know what I'm saying? Our heart can love who it wants to love, but is that really the man that God has for you? You see what I'm saying? And so we got to ask the Lord that. And so I began to ask the Lord, um, I said, Lord, if I'm listening to my own self. If I'm listening to my own heart and not your voice, and I'm not listening to you, then Lord, prevent anything, Father, from happening concerning this relationship. I said, because I want it to be directly from your voice to my ear that I hear you. And I began to ask the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, you reconfirm to me if this is my husband or not. I said, if indeed this is not my husband or not, allow me to meet the right person at the right time. Or you can be very specific, you know? You can be specific, be like, Lord, allow me to walk in the midst of my future husband this week. Hey, nothing wrong with being specific, okay? <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Um, you know? And I promise you, God will begin to reveal that thing to you. I promise you he will. I prom I double dog dare you to pray that. If you need reconfirmation, if you if for some reason you're starting to doubt that the person you are with is really not your husband, your future husband, let me say it that way, go to God to ask God to reconfirm that, okay? I heard a TikTok. I don't know who it was I was listening to. And she said something that was so not true. I wanted to comment, but I didn't. And she said, if you got to ask God if this is your spouse or not, nine times out of ten, he is not your spouse. And I disagree 1,000%. I disagree 1,000%. There is nothing wrong with being certain that you are with the right person. There is nothing wrong with asking the Lord to show you if this is your husband. Because many times women has married men who they thought God said was their husband and turned out to be counterfeits. Maybe, just maybe, that woman should have prayed and asked for God to reconfirm that situation, okay? And maybe, just maybe, she would not have married that person. I'm just throwing it out there. So if you got to ask God to reconfirm if the man that you are with is your husband, baby, by all means, do it. Get some clarification once and for all just to make sure there is nothing wrong with asking God to just re-show you something. There is nothing wrong with that. How many times have we asked our biological parents, our earthly parents, you know, something um, two times, three times, four times, or even more than that, right? Because we wanted confirmation. We want to make sure that we're doing something right. We want to make sure that we are understanding what our parents want for us to do, right? Okay, what makes you think our Heavenly Father 
what makes you think our heavenly father is not like that right he wants us to come to him and to get some confirmation from him listen if you are not 1000 percent sure you heard you heard the holy spirit correctly the holy spirit will come back into your ear and be like i said that you heard right and if you didn't hear right he going to you didn't hear that you didn't hear that correctly i said blah 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 because i'm telling you baby listen i pray my hand up to god i prayed that prayer okay because this is a partner this is a lifelong partner you want to make sure that this partner is for you you see what i'm saying and so don't and don't be scared to pray that prayer y'all for real don't be scared because you may be like well if i pray that and then god start prevent things from happening and my hopes was high then what okay so would you rather have your hopes high now you know what i'm saying and you know and for, and you deal with what's what god is doing now then to wait later and then to be even more hurt you see what i'm saying so yeah there's nothing wrong if you want god to reconfirm that you heard him correctly and that you wasn't listening to your own heart and that you wasn't listening to your own thoughts and your own mind and you really want to know if god told you that this man is indeed your husband begin to ask him because many times in relationships um and it, let's be clear relationships are not perfect there's going to be some trials and tribulations that's going to be some turbulence in that relationship regardless of what type of relationship it is you know what i'm saying that's going to be some type of turbulence there but it's going to take you two to make sure that you are together in the midst of the turbulence and making sure that you guys are together after the turbulence you see what i'm saying this is how you know if you're with the right person is if you tell that man how you truly feel in a relationship and i hear you god and that man don't do anything about the relationship you may need to reconsider because he may not be the one for you because a real man that really wants to be with you is going to work his tail off to make sure that their relationship is intact especially if he believes that you are anointed to be his wife he is going to do what he needs to do to ensure that you feel secure in that relationship he's going to be the man he's going to step up to the plate but if you have told this man how you feel multiple times and nothing happened you may need to reconsider and ask the holy spirit to reconfirm who this man is to you because one thing for sure, one thing I know, the Holy Spirit is not going to put a man in your life that's going to hurt you. You are the daughter of the Most High God, right? And he is not going to put you in a position of being hurt. That's for sure. So if you need clarity, you need some more clarity <laughs> on who this man is, go to God in prayer. I'm telling you, he will reconfirm everything that you need to know. And not just relationship-wise, but anything life-wise, the Holy Spirit will reconfirm to you to make sure that you understand whether you heard right or whether or not you didn't hear right. If you did not hear right, he will tell you what he said. You just got to be open to listen and let your heart be ready to receive what is being said, okay? I prayed this prayer before. And you know what I'm saying? So... You just got to sit back and let God do his work. Let God do his work. Like I said, if he, if this man loves you like he said he do, he's going to show it to you. He's going to prove it to you. And he's going to make sure he make you feel secure in your relationship. All right? What's up, everybody? This is the evening the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Halle, halle. I am right now um, in the process of feeding my last friend here. I went earlier, just a moment ago, to uh, back to the Walmart, and I see my other friend there. So I want to make sure I get him fed because it's about to rain out here. Hold on. 
about to stop and get him something to eat real quick. Him and his dog. Be careful, that sauce, I don't want the sauce to fall. It's oh, falling. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Did y'all see Rover? Rover looks so cute. With his sweater on, he had a sweater on. Let me see if y'all can see Rover, hold on. Look now, I named him Rover, okay? That's not his name for real. Oh, they go wrong for y'all. He eating. All right, guys. So I just fed my last friend or what have you. I think he giving it to Rover, which I don't care. Um, so yeah, cause it look like it's about to rain, y'all. And so, how you guys doing, though? Let me see if I don't know this thing. All right, guys. How you guys doing? All right, guys. So, I done made it home. I done made it home. And I told you, it looked like it's about to rain. I wanted to go out and feed my friends and and so forth so i may just go to my usual location i may try my parking see if there's somebody there that may be in need of something i don't know but it look like it's gonna rain though y'all like <sighs> if i can warm their food up before it starts to rain i'd be good if i just go to my regular location or what have you so mm -hmm. I'm gonna see when I get in the house or what have you but um, again I want to encourage you guys to really help the homies help the needy y'all for real take time out of your busy schedule set some time aside and really focus on somebody else focus on somebody else's needs okay I'm serious focus on somebody else's needs don't always focus on your needs you know, when God sees that you are loving on somebody else, he will love on you. You see what I'm saying? When you love on somebody else, God will love on you. When you sowing seed, when you dropping seeds in somebody, God will drop seeds in you. You see what I'm saying? You reap what you sow. And so, start loving on people so that God can love on you. God can sow and plant into you the same way you've done for other people, right? Stop always being the, the take. Let me take, let me take this. But start being the giver. Start releasing your hands to be the giver to somebody. I'm telling you, it feels good. And allow that to be a part of your lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? Let that be part of your lifestyle. Don't let this be just something you do one time at one time only. No. Let helping somebody else be a part of your lifestyle. Let that be part of your mindset. Because when you begin to bless others, God will bless you. When you begin to pray for others, God will pray over you. And God will begin to bless you in ways that only he can bless. So when you begin to take the focus off of you and focus on somebody else, God will then place his focus on you. I just want to sh just share that nugget, okay? All right, peace out. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing, y'all? It is 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> and I just made it back home. I had went to go feed my friends. You know, I try to go feed them on... Sundays and Mondays or what have you so yeah I was 
actually able to go today before it rained because it do look like it's about to rain for real so thank god i made it home safe and sound holly holly i just got done eating myself or whatnot but yeah overall today has been a good day a blessed day um to god be the glory for that um but yo yo i am home now i'm about to get out this car I'm going to relax for the remainder of today. And I'm going to do some reading. And that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video that I did earlier. And I pray that it blessed you and that it motivated you and that it gave you some type of encouragement. Yeah, I'm about to get out the car because I see Ryan now. Alright, I love you guys. Peace out.